You're tuning in to the Wild, Weird, and Sometimes Normal podcast. If you have a story or a guest recommendation that you think others need to hear, email me at wild, weird, and sometimes normal at gmail.com. Let's get this started. Alex and Brett, kick it! Normal. This episode, my guest is Duke Mills. Duke is a former member of the military and online UFO researcher. Our main discussion on this episode is the UFO incident in Mage, Brazil, that took place in 2020. This was a real time UFO event with pictures, videos, and posts on social media. And a short time later, the majority of these posts have been scrubbed. We continue our discussion on how, for decades, Duke has been visited, abducted, and had medical procedures done to him by the Greys. Most of Duke's encounters took place in the astral realm. Finally, the pod takes a heavy turn and may be triggering for some listeners. Duke discusses suicide among some of the men he served with and also his attempts at it. A very brave conversation by Duke. If you or someone you know needs help, there are people out there. Please call the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline at 988. Duke's a lot like the A-Team. He's hard to find, but if you need him, he'll be there. When you do run across him, give him some wild and weird love and tell him you heard him on the program. Enjoy the show. Are you looking for CBD for your pet? My friends at Pure Pet Wellness have what you need. They use the highest quality ingredients. While other companies may use synthetic oils in their CBD, Pure Pet Wellness uses organic ingredients. Organically grown hemp, organic coconut oil, organic shea butter, organic beeswax, and that's just to name a few a family-owned and operated company that also offers fast shipping. Go to purepetwellness.com for all your pet's CBD needs and use the discount code WILD and WEIRD at checkout. That's WILD, A-N-D, WEIRD. Treat your animal right. Go to purepetwellness.com. Are you looking to buy a home in New Jersey? Escape the city and move to the suburbs? Finally purchase a vacation home on the lake or down the shore? Maybe you're one of the lucky ones who are retiring and moving out of state. If so, let me help you. Keller Williams and the Real Estate Professional Group have what you need to make your goals come true. Reach out and have a conversation with someone who will put you first. Contact Brian McCoach at 856-321-1212 or email McCoach at kw.com. Welcome to another episode of Wild, Weird, and Sometimes Normal. I'm your host, Brian. And today, my guest is Duke Mills. Duke, welcome. Hello, everybody. Duke, thanks for coming on. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. So, Duke, I found you on Twitter. I was following this account, Anonymous Shadow. Good account. There's tons of UFO, paranormal, I guess more UFO stuff going through there. And in May of 2020, there was a fascinating event that happened in Mage, M-A-G-E, Brazil. Pretty sure I'm pronouncing it wrong, but I don't speak Portuguese. But for this episode, we're going to refer to it as Mage. So in May of 2020, there was a real-time UFO event happening on Twitter. Do you recall how you got involved in following it or seeing it for the first time? Well, the first thing that happened was a group of friends of mine that are also into the paranormal alerted me on Discord the very day that it appeared on Reddit. And I went to check it out for myself, and there was tons of Facebook posts, like uh, social media was blowing up. There was a lot of stuff on mostly Reddit, but there was stuff scattered on Twitter. And then after a couple of weeks, it just went dark. There was no more coverage, no more podcasts on it. There were several podcasts on it that made some progress. Most of them were in Portuguese, but some got translated. I consulted uh, my Brazilian friend who's bilingual, and he listened to a video of the alleged Brazilian army radio communications. And he said that it was a little bit informal, but he said that was he definitely believed it to be real. Okay, let's give the audience a recap of what was happening. From everything that I've gathered and read, it started 
late midnight hours and there were lights in the sky in various patterns. There were helicopters following these lights. Now there's tons of video footage. Just if you type in hashtag mage UFO, mage OVNI, O-V-N-I, that's, that's the Portuguese word, I guess. It's just all over the place. And there were several suspicious thing I noticed was there were several suspended accounts. A lot of accounts got suspended. People got banned with no explanation other than it's a hoax. But they didn't give any further explanation. MUFON didn't either. MUFON allegedly had an article on this that's still up and you can see it. And they just said, oh, it's a well-designed hoax but they didn't report their findings. They didn't go into detail about how they arrived at such a conclusion. But the uh, events got weirder when there was supposedly a video, which I've seen, that there were gunshots in the forest. And there was a group of civilians that allegedly followed these UFOs to this closed-off government area. And this is when uh, I started believing this event really happened. I, I do still believe this happened. Uh, there was a death certificate of somebody involved in an explosion at a factory called Imbel, I-M-B-E-L, all capital letters. I have a screenshot of that somewhere, but uh, there is one uh, archived Reddit page. It's completely archived and preserved, and it has all of the information. And me and Shadow, we're kind of... Uh, we're kind of the underdogs of UFO Twitter. You know, we're not very popular. We got unpopular opinions. And it's easy for people like us to get overshadowed and outspoken by these bigger name people. And, and we have been just pleading with these guys, take Mage UFO seriously, investigate it, because it has so much evidence and people just throw it over their shoulder. And I, I couldn't comprehend why. Yeah, so for this event, and just give a little more detail and, you know, maybe from my perspective, what I saw. It was exciting to see it happening in real time. I don't know if I saw it that day as it was happening or the next morning, but there were tons of videos from different angles. So it wasn't just one person filming it. One person filming it, and if you want to say it's a hoax, it's very hard to prove or disprove. It's, it's hard to give a lot of credit to just one video and say, hey, I'm going to hang my hat on this, and this is definitely a UFO. It was a bluish light in the sky. You're seeing people at different levels from apartment buildings or office buildings where it might be on top of it or outside on balconies. You're seeing street level. There's traffic happening below. So this isn't just filmed out in a forest or over trees. It was a hovering bluish light, blue glow kind of around it. So all these yeah, different angles. It looked kind uh, of like a donut shape to me. I, and I've seen that that same type of UFO in many other places around the world in different videos. So this is happening in real time. You're getting a lot of one, it's in Portuguese, so it makes it a little tough if you don't speak it. If you have a Brazilian connection, that's pretty nice. I need to work on mine. But this craft then comes down, and then there's other tweets, videos coming out. The events are a little bit discoordinated. There's there's still some gaps that need to be filled because making a timeline out of all this chaos is very difficult, even after the amount of time that has passed. I'll have to send you the link to the uh, archived Reddit page because it's where we got almost all of our information from yeah that'd be awesome because there's not a video of the ufo crashing so you don't have an right. explosion you don't have a lightning strike or a missile strike or anything like that but you do have the video of the ufo hovering there are videos you can hear helicopters in the in the background or you can see other lights going around and then you know so let's let's cover things that we know right that we can pretty much say are true one thing I do want to bring to attention is on the alleged day that it happened, there was a huge civil rights protest outside in that area. And there is no way those people would not have seen it. And that's why so many people saw it is because there was a large protest going on. I also looked up activities in U.S. Southern Command, U.S. Southcom. That's all U.S. military branches and garrisons there in South America. And uh, there was some kind of joint medical training exercise that took place somewhere around that time frame. And there was also a security briefing just a few days before the, these UFOs appeared. So there was a big security briefing and nobody knows what it's about, but I can pull it up on the U.S. Southcom archives that there was a meeting scheduled for some big thing. It, I mean, 
it's possible it could have been a military training exercise. So I'm not saying, hey, it's aliens, but there was a lot of things that happened that a lot of people don't have answers to. Right. So the town, it seems like they put up a security perimeter to keep people out of going into the woods. It was near this factory that had an explosion. Right. There are videos that seem to coordinate that there's gunfire happening in the woods. Mm-hmm. So all these things, I, I feel those things are very credible. Now, if it was a, you know, a government research ship, if it was advanced government technology, that's fine too. This was, you know, this was definitely something that appeared to be more advanced than we typically see in the, in the sky in daylight, than, you know, flying over, you know, your house or cities or anything. This seemed to be something that was hovering without making noise. It seemed like it wasn't leaving any type of trail of like a power source. There was no uh, exhaust coming out of it. It didn't appear. No, granted, you put in infrared and you, and you switch and maybe you see some different things. But from just, it just looked like it was hovering there. And some of the translated videos, you can hear the excitement. You can hear the anxiety and, and, and the fear. It wasn't just somebody getting on and, and streaming and, and just talking. But I, I find this topic so interesting. And, and it's, it's like, it seems, you know, it's not the first UFO event happening, you know, during the internet era. But during the social, the height of social media, where things can get connected so much around and having so much collaborated evidence. This seemed like it was it. It was so exciting as it was happening, and it really got swept under the rug. I don't know, you know, you said you heard Brazilian Portuguese podcast. I can't think of a U.S. podcast that has really covered this at all. That's another thing that UFO Twitter has brought out in the open is other countries seem so open about the UFO topic, like Russia's published thousands of UFO reports for public consumption. South America's always been, you know, open. Every country in South America has been completely open about the UFO issue. Canada has been pretty open about it. We seem to be the only country that keeps locking these up in a black vault, you know? Yeah. I just had Mike O'Brien on an episode that's that's coming up and he is an author of a UFO book and paranormal. And we got that discussion a little bit of South America. Their government has come out completely like, oh yeah, there's UFOs, there's, there's aliens. And, you know, we've, we've recorded it. And allegedly, there's 4K U.S. government video of UFOs that they don't release, but they released the hazy Tic Tac video off the Nimitz. They they released the Chinese spy balloon that went across all of America that they shot off of the Carolinas. And you see one video of that. The three things they shot down over Lake Huron, Alaska, and I think the other one might have been in Canada. No, zero videos of that. They don't have that. But then the next week, I believe it was off the coast of Russia, we had a Predator drone that was buzzed by a Russian jet and crystal clear, like you were watching Top Gun 2, this image is coming out of, of the Russian jet buzzing by this drone. It was really amazing footage for you know being captured up there. And yet they, awesome. they don't have any images that they can release that are not completely blurry or anything at all. One thing I want to mention about the balloons, okay, and uh, not too many people know about this, But there is a system the CIA used to use in the 1980s. You know, I'm a Metal Gear fan, so I I honestly know about this because it appears in the games a lot. But these balloons could actually be the Fulton surface to air recovery system. And they have varying degrees of that, which can carry anything from a single person to a large vehicle. And some of these balloons might be that system being used again. They say it hasn't been used, but trust me, special forces are out there using this system. And we've done some incredible things too, like the time that we stole an entire Russian submarine, you know, just completely stole it with the crew inside. So there could be things, some crazy stuff like that going on too. We have advanced our tech quite a lot, and it's getting to the point now where it's hard to tell if something's extraterrestrial or not. So that's scary too. You know, human beings having this kind of technology is also a very scary thing. So one of the mage videos that came out, it's only about a five second clip. It looks like somebody's kind of climbing up a little valley or a type of hill, and there's a little brief view. Do you think that video is true, or do you think that is more of, you know, try to sow dissension? Key. remember there was a photograph I, th- I think it's maybe it's a still frame from that it, it goes up so the person's kind of climbing it's shaky and then it stays still that they like freeze frame it and there's nothing else is that, that the one is that the one where they uh they tried to explain it away as being a dog bull i, I think it's so. like a sil- it was like a silver orb on top of what looked like the dirt mount right oh so that was like the google maps that they were talking 
I think, up, about that they were showing the, uh, the Google Maps was showing a hole in the forest where the UFO apparently crashed. And this was the straight up and down picture they have of that. They have that. And then there's okay. this other picture that comes out. I'll have to send, I'll have to send it to you. I remember uh, the uh, Google Maps anomaly. And on the Google Maps one, satellites can do some really strange things when they take pictures. So it could be possible, but I'm leaning towards no on the Google Maps one. There was, I think I saw a video where there was a shiny silvery blue object in a dirt mound and it was at nighttime. And I'm not sure if that's a video you're referring to or not. Usually that video is tied with the other one that there's, it's shaky, then it goes there and you can kind of see something. Again, it's not, it's not crystal clear what you're looking at. So part of the other story with this is that there were aliens in that craft and that they were on, on the run in the jungle. That's what the radio chatter was about. The radio chatter, we confirmed it's authentic Portuguese and it does sound like soldiers are talking. And there was a translated transcript and I ran that through my Brazilian friend too to make sure the translation was accurate and he said it was. Now, as far as linking this to any kind of radio log, you know, the Brazilian army is never going to let us see that because that would be classified. Yeah, there's a, a video that has the audio. There's several copies of that video. It was one of the few videos that stayed completely up, you know, that didn't get suspended off YouTube. And there is a great possibility that it could have been extraterrestrials. And there was another video I saw. It was also fully in Portuguese. And my friend just can't take his time of day to translate every single video for me. So, you know, he's got a job and stuff, too. This one video had a 3D animation of their timeline of what happened, and it showed Brazilian Army soldiers engaging what looked like tall grays. They were discussing about how they believe this is what happened in that video in the forest where you see the smoke coming out of the forest, you hear the gunshots and explosions, but you don't see anything because they're fighting inside the vegetation, apparently. That happened. It looked... There was no time on this video, I don't think, but it looked like it happened at high noon. You know, the sky was cloudy and uh, it looked like it was kind of hot and humid out. Because this crash allegedly took place late at night. So for them to finally discover where it crashed and, you know, set up a perimeter and then start going in, that easily could have been a few hours till they got there and for daylight to come up. Yeah. That's all very consistent with how things are usually carried out. I was, uh, I was in the U.S. Army for nine years and, uh, that's pretty much how it goes. The radio chatter sounded legitimate. And, it's, you know, I can't say for sure if that's what happened, but the radio chatter and that video is enough evidence for me to really raise an eyebrow at this could be something. There was a couple of other things, like a guy from the Bronx made an illustration. It's on one of these smaller Twitter accounts, I'd have to pull it up, but he claimed to be a remote viewer and that there was tall gray and Nordic and then shorter grays. And this aligns with the 3D animation video that was made, but that guy could have just watched that too. So there's no way to verify that either. No, that definitely does make it tough. Why do you think the US government, they dragged their feet so much on admitting, they renamed it the UAPs, but just the classic UFOs? What do you think the secrecy is? Well, in my opinion, uh, just based on my experience being around government facilities and how they carry out things, I think that there is probably areas where they have other stuff they don't want people to know about, like the equipment they use to test and supposedly, allegedly reverse engineer this stuff. They don't want our adversaries, you know, seeing these high tech facilities and these housing areas they might have the corpses or bodies in. It's probably linked mostly to that, that they, they just have other stuff that they don't want people knowing about. Not necessarily just the UFOs themselves, but uh they're cutting edge technology. They don't want to right. start pointing out you start opening up more and it's pinpointing and more in a general area. Yeah. You think maybe the internet made the world too small, too fast for the government to focus on that, you know, for 50 years, they were deny, 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 swamp gas, weather balloon, whatever it might be. And then literally not overnight, but, you know, in a technology sense overnight, the whole world was connected. You didn't have to have a relative or a friend in Brazil that you would call collect and pay a thousand dollars to talk to them for 10 minutes. Like everything just days. became, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but everything you, you're talking to people across the world in real time 
and finding out more. Now there's more newspapers. It wasn't, oh, I went on a trip and I stopped at the airport and here's here's a foreign newspaper. Everybody look at it. It's, it's pretty amazing. Everything was coming in. You're finding it made the world a lot smaller. And the US just seemed to dig their heels in more. Instead of, you know, you could say, hey, there are anomalies out there. And then while also covering your technology and your, you know, defense contracts and everything you want to cover. Yeah, I think the number one thing that they're trying to do right now, since it's just too much ground for the government to cover, I think that's why they're distracting us with this drama that you see about different activist groups and all this stuff and all the hate going around. I think I think the government's definitely antagonizing people against each other to distract them. That seems to be I don't believe that. I know that because, you know, I know this is a sensitive subject, but the Baltimore riots, the CIA and FBI instigated that and several other events. That's not something I believe. I know they're doing that because the government wants us to hate each other so that we can't ever team up and find the truth. That's the way I feel about it. Right. Everything is a decisive topic. You have to have a steadfast opinion almost on everything. And almost everything is is now getting boiled down to politics. And whatever your opinion is, it becomes easier and easier to see who you may have voted for, or you know, just not vote at all, whatever it might be. But and it, it does seem like a divide and conquer. And why we're arguing over is a food label paying the right homage to a person to ancestry of a cartoon character, whatever it might be, you're it's the magician trick. You're watching the hand in front of you and missing everything that's happening in the back and too busy arguing, you know, how did he make that quarter appear? But the entire time, he just took it out of his pocket with the other hand and put it in there. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just the kind of guy where I don't care what anybody does as long as you don't hurt me and my family. I, I just don't care. I don't get in people's business. I don't have the energy for it. I definitely think all of it's a distraction. You know, I, I do think it's good that questions are being asked that we were all afraid to ask. Things like sensitive issues like gender, race, these things can't just be shoved over and ignored. But like you said before, too much too fast is also bad. These concepts need to slow down, kind of put the brakes on a little bit, let everybody have their fair voice and opinion before you start deciding who an enemy is. And when people try to make something into an enemy, then everybody just leaps to attack it because everybody wants to feel important, like they're doing something good or fighting for something right. When that's misguided, you're creating victims and creating more hatred. And those people are going to have kids that are they're going to have their own opinions about it. And it just that's how these wars last for centuries. Yeah. Right. There used to be, at least there was the image of civilized discourse or, you know, civilized conversations. And I was talking to someone else about this though. But again, the appearance, it used to be that everybody wanted the country to move forward. And then how you voted, it was just a little more did the road curve a little more to the left or to the right. And now, and not assigning this to any party, it appears that one party wants to move backwards and tell you that it's really forwards. And the other party wants to go straight up in the air and tell you it's really forwards. But none of it really seems like it's getting much better for everyone as inflation skyrocketing, as, as jobs are coming down, as mass layoffs. And you turn on the news every week and just see the, you know, Facebook cutting 10,000 jobs, Amazon cutting 10,000 jobs. And all of these in a vacuum is okay, but you start adding up all these 10,000s of jobs, you have a million people out of work, you know, from these safe companies, as I'm using quotes, as these safe companies they're supposed to provide stable jobs for the future. Oh, absolutely. And it's very cutthroat and these people don't care. You know, I'm not going to mention any names, but believe the Facebook administration is very corrupt. I've seen the way that they've handled civil disputes between users. And uh, it's usually always the popular money making buy my T-shirt kind of guys that they end up getting behind because why lose money on something like that when they can just take their side and keep them on the platform. So you got stuff like that going on. So with the general <laughs> wide statement that I think everybody can agree is that there's a lot of chaos in every day. Now, it's funny because if you step outside and talk to your neighbor, rarely, at least in my experience, does politics come up immediately. You talk about your interests, you talk about the weather, your sports team, your kids, talk about your lawn. There are a lot of things to talk about. Rarely does it get into, hey, can you please tell me your uninformed deep dive opinion on X, Y, and Z? But if you follow on social media, constant chaos, you see headlines in newspapers, constant chaos. So if you're somebody who just tunes in for a second, constant chaos, a lot of stress, a lot of, a lot of loose ceiling trying to get you excited or, or upset about one thing, whatever it might be. Oh, yeah. Do you think that, yeah, oh, right. 
Do you feel that the government is using the discourse, the current discourse in society to take advantage of the UAP, the UFO phenomenon that's happening to steer it in a direction that they can control? I absolutely believe that. You know, if you look at what uh, our government has done to anybody that's tried to bring positive change, they've either gone to prison or been killed, you know, from JFK all the way to the present day. And uh, anybody that's ever tried to bring uh, the truth about UFOs, like several presidents promised to bring the truth about UFOs and that never happened. They just went silent on it. Like uh, even Barack Obama, well, he's just now coming out about it. You know, and he during his presidency, he was super quiet about it. But now that Barack Obama has been out for a while, he's starting to come out and say, yeah, I was told all sorts of stuff. And he hasn't gone into that because, you know, I'm pretty sure they're still watching him. But there's definitely something going on. There's just been too many former presidents and former retired government officials that are saying there's something going on. And, and it's been generations of it. Right. I remember a clip of one of the late night talk shows, maybe Letterman or Leno, and Bill Clinton was on there. And he was talking about how he was very excited when he was elected president to go in and finally uncover the UFO topic. And I think his talking point at that time was, oh, there's just nothing there. I asked for it, then they didn't give it to me. It's funny, I, I brought this up on another podcast. I think a comedian had a joke and it was, you know, the US president is viewed as the most powerful person in the world and kind of steers the world in which way you know, you're going to go. But he's only there for four to eight years. And then he can go on speaking tours. He can go on late night talk shows. Obama now opening up that, hey, I want to talk more about UFOs. But yet the Pope, the one was sick or he got old, whatever it was, and they had to reelect another Pope when he was still alive, which typically isn't how the tradition is done. They wait till the one dies. So there was a retired Pope and they never let him out of the Vatican. So it's like, who has the true secrets of, of nature of society? That one person, the figurehead of the world, is allowed to go on speaking tours, pretty much say whatever they want. And then another person is locked away inside of its own private city and not allowed out. Mm -hmm. That's uh, definitely been the case in a lot of situations. Uh, the Vatican. Now, I want to just go ahead and tell everybody I, I am a pagan. You know, I'm a former Christian because as I researched the roots of my former faith, it just kept getting deeper and deeper. And then, it, well, let's take this from this Canaanite religion. Let's take this from the Egyptian religion. And then you, you soon find out that it's a conglomerate and an assimilation of sorts of all the other religions. And I was like, this is this is too much. I, I, I'm, I got to get out of this. This feels like this feels wrong for me, you know. It was forced on me to begin with because I'm from the south of Mississippi and they, <laughs> they're the kind of people that drag you to church whether you believe in it or not. The Vatican has been known to house a lot of esoteric texts, some that teach what we would consider psionic powers and abilities like telepathy. You know, uh, what do you think prayer is? You know, prayer is also a form of magic. It just seems throughout the Bible it condemns anything that would give humans the power to control their own destiny. But you also have to consider that that Bible has just been in too many hands. I'm not saying I don't believe in God. I do believe in God, but I, I don't believe this is what he wanted. Right. There are documented civilizations with the same base for Christianity that have repeated over and over. Now, that same base shows up in Christianity. And then what's that built off of? You know, could that be true or could it not? That's up to people's own personal interpretation and beliefs and things like that. I tend to think any type of spirituality in a positive sense is good because it brings more of a unity around people. And if you want to get into Middle Eastern wars on is this person more important than the other one, I think that gets a little silly and takes away from whatever your main belief is, unless your belief is just chaos, then hey, you know, you're achieving it. But it yeah. does make it a little difficult sometimes when you, you're told this is the one and only, and then you just go back through previous history from thousands before, but like, like that exact very similar story was just told right here. And that exact very similar story was told just here. So it does make it a little tough. And it's been in a lot of hands. For instance, the book of Enoch did not make it into the Bible, yet they reference Enoch. And those texts have been recovered. And that talks more about giants and things like that, which, you know, exciting and fun and in the type of podcast that, that I have here, that's a fun topic to talk about. But at what point it was being put together, which book was found was deemed important and in which order it was put in, you know, it's very controversial and you, know, you can reorder them or take out what you don't like or completely rewrite because there's no historical text of this was written at this minute by this person. It, it gets to be a little blurry. Yeah. You also have to consider like 
this was way before the era of digital record keeping. And you're telling me every single scribe, every single record holder and every single teacher was completely honest. I don't think so. We're seeing that now in real time. So I don't think it's changed. I don't, you know, I don't think a, a tiger changes its stripes. Yeah, absolutely. It's the same stuff, different day. So when they were studying UFOs in the 80s, there were some scientists coming out thinking that it had a, a demonic spin to it, an angle to the UFOs. And that could have been, we had three dimensions, you know, possibly a fourth could have been discussed at that time, the early 80s, a little, little hazy for me. But currently now we're up to, I believe it's 11 or 13 dimensions they talk about. So you start talking about dimensional portals or interdimensional beings, that could come off as demonic to somebody 40 years ago. Do, yeah, you, that's... Haven't, do you subscribe to anything that the extraterrestrials, the aliens, whatever you want to call them, could be a demonic force? Well, here's how I feel about taking any kind of approach to study is, you know, when I was in high school and just people I've talked to and stuff online over the years, because as a teenager, I researched the paranormal too online. I learned very early in life to set aside, like not discard, but you're taking your faith and you're just putting it over here on the table temporarily. And then you're putting on thinking in science mode only and you're taking in the facts and the information but if something goes against what you believe in that's okay you set your beliefs to the side you're just getting the facts right now but too many people panic and they try to well this this proves my religion so it must be evil and they get afraid of it and they move away from it but i learned not to do that and i will admit it's a hard skill to do when you're passionate about something you believe in you know, you love Jesus, you love God, and you don't want to violate that. So I, I'm a former Christian. I understand that. But, you know, set, setting aside your bias is the first important step. I'd say that's almost 90% of it. And then you will learn some very scary things. Like I've, I'm an experiencer myself, and I've been around the beings that are called greys. And it just seems like they feed off of pure terror. They won't kill you or physically harm you, but when they're around, just every hair raises on end like this isn't normal. They shouldn't be here. You just your every cell in your body just rejects that they're here. They're they're not natural. And I refuse to believe they're friendly. I've never experienced anything but pure terror from them. So um I can say this. I think they're emotionally parasitic and they definitely could be considered demonic for sure. They that's what demons do. I like what you said before about putting your biases aside, because if you're only looking through the lens of your own experiences and beliefs, it is hard to assign and you'll, anything and outside of that. It will be impossible to understand it, too. Right. You're really putting yourself in a box. And if it doesn't fit in that box, you're automatically assigning it something negative. Right. But then also, if we don't know enough about it, how can you really put it in a box if we don't even have the words to describe it? So I, I find that interesting. So can you elaborate a little more on your experiences the first time that happened or since then? I'd say the first time it really, really, I could just differentiate it completely from a nightmare was 1997. I was about 10 years old. Me and a friend were outside in my front yard. I was in a small trailer park in Vicksburg, Mississippi. You know, it's a real rural area. So, I mean, we're talking so far from the city, it takes the police four hours to get there. We were really helpless and... There was uh, the trailer park was built on top of a junkyard. So there was a big slope behind my trailer, like a big hill that goes down into the woods. And uh, I had my tree house like right at the top of that slope and, and behind my trailer. So me and my childhood friend, Joshua, I lost contact with him years ago. We're just talking in the front yard. He was over for the weekend after high school. He said, hey, what's that? And he pointed in the woods. It was you know, the teardrop shaped head, the thin body, the long arms, they were sort of glowing with a sort of television static look. It's so hard to describe. It would even be harder to try to graphically represent this even on a computer, but it just looked like television static in those silhouettes. And I could make out eyes that looked serpentine. These weren't black lens eyes, but like a, a slit, like a snake's eye. So they could have been reptilian, but it just sat there and stared and you know my friend was an avid drug user i wasn't but uh he was high at the time so he started mocking it and talking down to it like he wanted to fight it well when he did that two more appeared just almost out of thin air 
Now, they were behind some vegetation, so I couldn't tell if they appeared or climbed up the hill because it was about six in the evening. And at that time, Joshua was like, uh, oh, crap, oh, crap, let's go inside. And so uh, I stared a little bit longer, and then he's like, come on, let's go inside. And I wanted to see what they were all about and why they were here. But ever since then, I started having strange nightmares where they would appear as black shadows in the same silhouette, and they would sort of shadow walk, like move through the darkness. And what they would do is when they had appear to me, usually when I was alone and it was a night I was asleep, they'd make my heart pound and my adrenaline would just start going so excessively that it would make my body lock up. And then I'd sort of go into like a death state, and then I'd wake up as if it were a dream. Now, after this kept happening, I had to get answers. You know, I kept getting, you know, I try to tell family this. They're like, oh, you need to pray to God. Oh, you're doing something sinful or wrong. You know, again, that's, we go back to the bias part here. I tried getting exorcisms from, you know, Southern Baptist priests. I've gone to different denominations and nothing worked. It kept happening to me. And it kept happening to not just me, but some of the people around me. Like it, it was just certain people though. And I could, I can't explain their criteria for selection but i do notice it tends to be a lot of people from abused families or de depression and that's a very disturbing trend that goes back to my parasite theory yeah i found out that uh these dream states are like a carbon copy of our world and it's called the astral plane and uh that's that exists through all the religions that's basically the realm of all sentient beings ideas and thoughts that exist there so like even fictional beings exist there or gods from different religions and that's what pagans usually do is they draw from the astral plane and you will things into reality and i believe you know I, i'm not trying to bring my own bias into this but how this would relate to everything is it teaches you that you have control over your own destiny and there's a creepy relation between the spiritual realm and this one because it feels like we actually control and create gods and not the other way around and sometimes when these aliens are around they feel foreign but you also feel a sort of oneness with them and i can't describe it it's like a union in mind so it's it's a lot of stuff to take in. And I'm, you know, if I had all, all the answers, <laughs> I'd be out there teaching it because I'm still trying to figure it out myself. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that. When you're encountering these beings, is it always in the astral realm? You're going to sleep in your bed at your home and then you're encountering these entities on the astral plane or are you encountering them in your home? Well, that's where it uh, gets even scarier because I will always feel a chilling presence in the room. You know how when a door slowly opens or if if somebody walks by you, even, even if your eyes are closed and you can't hear anything, you'll feel the air shift. I feel that. I feel like the air is shifting, like something's walking around, but I don't see any impressions on the carpet. I don't see any shadow anywhere. I will sometimes see... You know, like when you're outside and staring at one place on a sunny day, you'll kind of get a mirage of the air moving. It'll look kind of like the ripples in the air like that. And that's the scariest part. And it's like you'll see it in a shape and you'll you'll notice it just enough to where if it turns its head, you'll see the shape turn its head. And it's I can tell you I've faced down the barrel of a gun before when a former NCO threatened to shoot me and nothing terrified me as much as this being of just pure energy. And I would feel suddenly an overwhelming urge to sleep. Like I couldn't fight it off. Like it's like narcolepsy times a million. And it got so bad to where these encounters would happen so much. I was walking around in the mall when I was 14 years old and I was with a friend and I just had that fucking I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> it, it's fine. <laughs> we we celebrate all the words here. Okay. Yeah. It was this throbbing headache. You know, just my temples throbbing. It was like I got. It was like I got punched in the brain, and then I felt, oh, I gotta lay down. I gotta go sleep. And my friend's like, "Whoa, man, are you all right?" And I was like, "I, I gotta. I just gotta lay down. I'm just tired. I just need a nap." Like. That was the only thing going through my head. And uh, 
I sat down on a bench. I instantly went to sleep and he sat there with me trying to nudge me and wake me up and nothing. I, I was feeling it, but I instantly had this dream state where I was on a metal table and they had me paralyzed, were just digging drills into me, cutting me open. I could see my own blood. And like, I knew I was in the mall still because I could hear my friend shaking and trying to do that to me. And I could simultaneously feel this carbon copy of my body being operated on. I got feedback from both of it. And I read about that as well. And uh, that's called your astral body. Now, the thing about the astral body is it can die, but as long as your physical body is alive, it just makes a new one. So it's like healing from a wound, but depending on how many times it happens, it, it can make your body also function real lousy. Like you'll be slow thinking, your speech will be slurred, it'll be like you're drunk, you know, or like somebody with a neurological disorder. So it can do some damage. Like Gray's doing this, they'll never. They'll never kill you. I will say that. They're never going to slit your throat or anything like that, but they will make you lose sleep. They will make you late for work, and that's still a big deal. I know how ridiculous at surface value it sounds to say, oh, there's little space gremlins that made you late for work, but, I mean, that's a reality, and when it's a reality, you have to take it seriously. If the grays are feeding off of negative energy, it would only make sense to cause more stress for you for them to then feed off of that. Right, so, it, you know, the, the crazy space gremlins isn't that crazy if that's their end goal is to cause more stress and anxiety for them to extract for whatever purpose they're using it for. Now, you know, for the mall, and then you're also, you know, your physical body and your astral body you're talking about. Have you ever had any scars appear or connected to any of this? I have on uh, multiple occasions. Uh, it was most frequent, and this was real stupid of me, but in 2001, July, I attempted contact. That was way before it was called CE5 and, you know, all these fancy terms they have for it. Most of the ufologist sites I had read back then adopted a lot of pagan terms. That That's basically what led me down that route like channeling, you know, when you're allowing a spiritual being into your body to sort of possess you or speak through you. And then there's an automatic writing and it, it all really fits together with a lot of concepts in paganism. And these beings are very telepathic. So it makes sense that we could interact with them even through things like prayer, which uh, some people, there's a lot of groups on the internet that worship the aliens. So some of them do actually come in peace, but to say all of them do is foolish, in my opinion. Right. We discussed earlier, you know, about putting your bias aside, but then also we don't have the words to use if we don't know what we're talking about. And you said that you made the mistake of channeling and Dr. Greer is big on the going out into the desert and channeling these beings and calling for them. It gets to be a slippery slope if you're asking for something to come and you don't know what that something is. Yeah, absolutely. And we haven't even solved a lot of basic things they've already fixed. Like, you know, they still have wars and stuff and a lot of the same problems we do, but they know how to work as a team a lot better than we do. We're still fighting each other just over what they are. So like, imagine if somebody, if they start, if they land and start walking among us and stuff, all it takes is one person to cause something serious to happen. And then we've got our first intergalactic riot. Right. I always find that interesting. One, I find it very interesting. The government shoots at the UFOs, that the ones that you know, we mentioned, the three over Alaska, Lake Huron, and the other one, I think, in Canada. The government said they shot down these objects. Now, one, they said it was a Hobby Lobby balloon. It was a $200 thing. That gives me a lot more questions about the competency of the government. If you can't see a child's science project without having to fire $800,000 worth of missiles at it. But allegedly firing on you know, possibly this mage event, Possibly, you know, Roswell was some type of, you know, they said there was an electrical event, you know, the story goes. These other instances where they're firing at things. If we were exploring, if we make it out outside of, you know, the Earth and the Moon and we start becoming multi-planetary species, we're not sending the Peace Corps, we're not sending a preacher is not the first person out of the, the ship. We're going to have special forces out of the ship. So if you're killing, you're shooting, you're shooting down 
the special forces, we don't give the benefit of the doubt of like, oh, they didn't know who we were. They didn't know that the U.S. special ops team that landed in the Congo, we, we're not giving the Congo people the benefit of the doubt. It's just destroyed. So start firing without understanding what you're doing fully just seems very foolish. Yeah, it does. And uh, I mean, that could be why the latest approach or the approach they've been using for the last few decades was just observe. And I've heard rumors about, you know, these secret teams that go out and, and take care of UFO crash retrievals and stuff. I'm sure everybody has by now. Yeah, th there's definitely been skirmishes going on already. I wouldn't say it's a full out war because you know, our military has engagements with other countries' armies all the time. It's just no big deal. They're just either trespassing on each other's territory or they're just fighting over an occupied area. So I wouldn't say we're completely at war with them, but there's definitely skirmishes going on. Right. And, and to piggyback off of that, I would say that when we have skirmishes either directly or through a third party, that we are pretty aware of what the other side has, at least within a a small range. Rarely is there an exotic weapon. Pretty sure I can say, you know, the nuclear bomb was an exotic weapon at the time. But since then, there has not really been an exotic weapon being used. We kind of know what Russia has. We kind of know what China has. We kind of know what Iran has. And we can prepare accordingly. Having zero idea what is on these UFOs and getting in skirmishes, again, goes back to maybe not the brightest idea. But since they haven't reacted going to that next step, is it just that it's child's play to them and losing a couple of drone ships or smaller ones? Is, is that part of the purpose as well, though, maybe to see technology? Yeah, there's one interesting theory I had, if uh, you'll entertain it, is um, these UFOs that are being sent down here and getting shot down, the lack of retaliation from the aliens for that, since there, there doesn't ever seem to be a re retaliation for that, they just react during the confrontation, but they don't really try to avenge each other or anything. I think these are penal units. And what those are is in the older World War II era, a penal unit is when you take felons, prisoners, and you make them fight as an infantry unit. So these could be the criminals from a bigger space empire that are being sent on suicide missions. Right. They use that currently in California to fight wildfires. They have an entire prison population that fights wildfires and will reduce their sentence. Possibly. You know, I don't think that's outlandish to say if there was somebody, you know, if I'm sure aliens have laws within their own realm, whatever they have. And if somebody was sentenced to whatever, like, hey, do you want to knock off? Who knows how long they live for? Hey, you want to knock a billion years off your sentence? Go to this crazy planet, fly around, get back whatever you can. And if you make it back, you know, you have less of a prison sentence or you're free. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. And I mean, if you factor in ideals from all religions just about have interdimensional aliens that live for forever or get reincarnated as us and us as them i'm pretty sure you know better technology doesn't mean better ethics they probably got all the same stuff we do but they probably have their own form of money i can't comprehend how a society like that would even look like even artistically is hard to represent you can't just say star wars because a lot of what they do is mental so I don't think entropy even happens there because matter can't really decay if it can just change with a mere thought. Right. It's also what we assign values to here. The United States is very monetary and possession driven. And do you have the newest clothes? Do you have the newest Yeezys? Do you have the newest car? But if, if they're, they may not value homes or vehicles the way that we do. That might also be why they, they don't really care to avenge their death is because if they have some sort of way to recycle soul, like quantum data, so to speak, they could just bring somebody back in the state they, they were. Right. We talked about video games. You can respawn. You're playing Call of Duty and you get killed. You're not going back to step one when you're in the battle with all of your buddies on there. You get respawned a different spot. Now you might not have your same guns or ammo, but you get to start over again. These entities could have that same type of process where like, oh, hey, you're stuck coming back as Duke Mills and, you know, good luck getting your whatever you've achieved over your latest meat suit. I achieved a lot of weight. <laughs> <laughs> Before I, I let you go, I appreciate your time. One, I'm going to ask you if you can just recap the mage event without me stepping on your toes and adding in nonsense. But secondly, why do you think the two faces of the UAP phenomena currently right now are Tom DeLonge? of To The Stars Academy and Blink-182 fame, and now Logan Paul allegedly filming, well, I don't think it's allegedly when he said that he did it, 
and Logan Paul filming the Chuck Clark UFO video that he has. Why do you think they're getting pushed to the forefront to be the face of possibly disclosure? I would say probably the weight of their popularity and how many people they can reach. Now, if you want my honest opinion, I don't think the best of either of the two. And I'm I'm admittedly a very picky person sometimes. So I would say, yes, it's the weight of the amount of people they can reach and influence because they're very big people that can sway a lot of minds in a certain direction. Now, I definitely understand that concept. And Logan Paul has all these followers. Also throughout his career, he's had some missteps. And if something was coming from him, okay, so let me take a step back. Tom DeLonge, people within my age range, recognize Blink-182 if you listen to that music. At the same time, I don't think anybody would say that Blink-182 is a serious band. They're a fun band. They make you know fart jokes as their own stage. I don't know if I would put him out there when you have other scientists. You have Neil deGrasse Tyson. He is a respected scientist mind. He goes on Joe Rogan. And you might not agree with everything that he says. You might not agree with everything Rogan says. That's not the point of it. Neil deGrasse Tyson goes on Rogan and he entertains different things. He has his Netflix or Amazon special that he's talking about going to space and, and things like that. Morgan Freeman, everybody loves him. Put Morgan Freeman out as the face of disclosure. <laughs> he carries more weight of, <laughs> of a sincere person than Logan Paul. I feel like you would just dismiss as a hoax anyway. And like, where is the money grab in this? When yeah. is he pulling the rug out from under me after I, I bought into it hook, line, and sinker? And he's like, oh, you're a sucker. I just made a billion dollars. And none of this is real. I, I don't see that as being smart. But I guess to a younger generation, and I'm sorry, I'm going to counterpoint here. I, I promise I'll be in it sometime. Uh, to counterpoint that, though, I feel like the younger generations are more open to this. So you don't need a Logan Paul reaching out to the 10 to 25-year-olds to say, hey, guys, there's UFOs. I feel like they're more likely to say, yeah, yeah, of course there's UFOs, man. Like Everybody knows that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, I think getting celebrities involved this early in it is not a bad idea. There's a lot of people that are being outspoken, I feel. I just feel that there's a lot of people with a lot of useful information and they just keep getting pushed to the side. And people are like, oh, well, that's nice, but let's focus on this huge big actor or see what they have to say. And it seems like there's a lot of promoting being done and there is money being, I, I don't think, I don't completely think it's wrong to profit off of it, but I also don't believe in paywalling information either when it's something everybody needs to know. That's just how I feel about it. I agree. Everybody should be allowed to make their living on however it is. But even when Tom DeLong launched to the Stars Academy, if you signed up and you had this premium membership and you could have bought in for like a hundred grand or something, it kept being reiterated. It's only an entertainment company. It's only an entertainment company. But then when you're pushing stuff out and saying, hey, this is true science. Well, the movie Aliens tells me it's true science, but I know that it's an entertainment movie. Like I'm not taking word for word what they're saying in the movie Aliens or what they're saying in the movie Forrest Gump as a documentary, just because I saw it on TV. Like, they're not, <laughs> they're telling you it's a movie. Tom DeLong is telling you, hey, I created this entertainment company and also UFOs are real. And then people are like, oh my God, he said UFOs are real. Like, did you miss the first part where he told you it's not real? He told you it's, it's Hollywood. So I, I just see, you know, and make money off of it. Great. Like you should. And, but Logan Paul at the same time, he makes money doing stunts and being ridiculous. And to have him then say like, oh, this UFO is real, you know, I think there's other people you could put at the forefront to add credibility to it. I think the younger generation who, you know, grew up with the excitement of after close encounters of the third kind, and, you know, it'd be on TBS every day, you'd, you'd watch it, that they're more open to things like that. But to have serious people come out and try to get the higher end uh, age wise, you know, the 50s and above to, to understand Like Congress has these hearings and some of those people, they'll have a Facebook hearing and they grill Mark Zuckerberg on how to reset their password. But you guys missed the entire point of the hearing. Like he's not here to tell you how to reset your password. Yeah, that's how stuff like the uh, Italy conference got hacked a while back. <laughs> I, I just find it, I, I find it frustrating that I feel like we take one step forward and then two steps back. And then we have the incident, like this major incident that it was coming off that's pretty important. I would put the percentage that it's closer to true than that it's not. Some of the other UFO videos you see, you're like, man, I don't believe that. I don't know. It seems like it could be CGI. This just seemed like there was too many angles happening at the same time, coming out in real time, and that there was a crowdsource of people putting together the timeline that was all adding up. Maybe that's the beauty of, of Twitter and social media now is the crowdsourcing of information. 
another thing I noticed in a few of those street videos, because uh, there was videos when people were marching for the civil rights protest and there was car alarms going off and uh, the UFO was causing it. The, the UFO was flying overhead and there were patterns in the sky and loud booms and thunders and uh, car alarms were just going off at, down the street as the UFOs moved. And there were police showing up there. They showed police cars pulling up and i'm like you know if this is a hoax they would have had to spend millions of dollars doing it why waste that money right if that video was better clarity that would have been a movie of what was happening like how much coordination would have had to go into this yeah for sure and now, when somebody just films a lot of people doing it right when somebody there was a, a video going around on twitter before and it, it was instantly known there was a marketing campaign but it showed these people were, I don't know, they're driving their car, riding their bike on like a country road. They showed a UFO zip by and then a fighter jet chasing it. And it was just, that was known to be a marketing campaign. That, if you know CGI, seems easier to achieve than to get hundreds to thousands, police force, entertainment type quality involved. And then for MUFON to say, oh, that's just a known hoax. But how, how are you going to explain all this stuff that's happening in the video that is timestamped that that's happening? Now, I understand that some of the audio we have is not timestamped, so it's hard to tie to it, but it's all coming out at the same time, and it all seems related to what's happening and what is being talked about on timestamp video. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I was very, very frustrated with MUFON's response because in everything that they've debunked, they have provided a reason. This is how we did it. This is what we use. This is our source information and it was none of that it was like oh this was a well-constructed hoax and it was a very nicely written article but how did you arrive to that conclusion and they they didn't they it was just a very vague and that got me even more suspicious and i've heard rumors that mufon's helping control the narrative too i've i've heard that from i don't know that for sure but i've been hearing it from a lot of people I would not be surprised that a large group, I'm not saying MUFON, I would not be surprised that a large group could be on a government payroll that would help fund. You know, if you spend your life doing this, it can be hard to make money doing it. I was just listening to a podcast, The Higher Side Chats, had Whitley Strieber on, a guy who wrote Communion. And he was talking about how he had to sell his home, I think it was in Massachusetts at one time, because he was mocked as the anal probe guy. That he talked about what happened to him with a UFO experience, an abduction experience, and allegedly the aliens probed him. And he became the butt of jokes. No pun intended on that. Sorry, buddy. Mm. Uh, he became the butt of jokes. And the government fed into that, though. And he had to sell his home. All his book sales dried up. He had to move to Texas and do this. And he was able to restart. Yeah, it makes it really hard for people to come out with stuff like that and you know i've had a couple of those weird experiences too and me as a guy that really makes me uncomfortable because people's natural first reaction is just going to be laughing and talking about you for weeks or months even years and then you always get marked for that and it just makes your trauma even worse like how how, how are you going to go to a counselor you know i know ted rose doing some work with that but Back in the day I was growing up, where would you get medical counsel for that? It's just not possible. No, I feel like you would probably get some psychological drugs to try to yeah. control you know, delusions that are being assigned to you that are real and very real to you. And it's a shame. Do you want to come out and, and talk about your story or share with a close one or talk to a doctor about it? And you know, you're afraid of being mocked and whatever this might be. And you're like, no, I'm afraid of the experience. I need to deal with this. And it makes it tough. And I'm sorry. And I got off on a tangent about the the government money and, and Strieber. But if you find your source of income compromised, and then the government was to come and fund you on the other end and be like, oh, hey, just make sure, do what you have to do, but also toe the line over here. You know, it could seem like a small compromise to you while ensuring the success of your organization or your career while, you know, making small compromises, which might seem for the greater good in the long run. It could, or I could just be full of shit. I don't know. I do think ufology is really different, difficult to make a lifetime career you would have to be very meticulous very careful about it because the, i've seen this happen to credible people who corner themselves you know i've heard rumors of people getting trapped in mortgages and stuff that 
debts they've accumulated. And when you run dry on paranormal content, well, then you have to either fabricate the evidence or just interview anybody about anything. And then it's a really dark path. And that's why I just, I work a normal job and I do it as a hobby, you know, and some people do it in retirement. That's a good path also, or crowdfunding. But as just a straight up career, it's some people can do it, but it's really difficult to pull off. And if you don't do it right, you damage the reputation of the whole field. Right. You should have all your ducks in a row and make sure you're living within your means from a regular job, whatever that might be. And then if you're doing this on the side, let that fund the side things. And as you're saying that, that kind of brings me back to the Logan Paul of you have to keep doing something. If the original content dries up, you have to keep going further and further or pushing the line to gain new followers, to re-engage with people who may have lost interest. And that is my concern with Logan Paul being the face of the UFO video, that he filmed it and he's going to be now in control of releasing it. I find that to be an issue as he is somebody who pushes the line over and over. Yeah, you know, and you had him like when he did that stunt when he was in boxing where he yanked that dude's cap off like that's on the street. That's like the biggest sign of disrespect you could do to somebody. And he's lucky he didn't get killed for it. Now, imagine if he goes to one of these UFO conferences and sucker punches somebody and thinking it's funny, you know, like a teenager. I mean, well, now you've got a lawsuit. Now you've got this person doesn't like this person or this person's laughing about it. And that's going to cause people to pick sides, too. So <laughs> I've seen a lot of in, arguments like that. <laughs> I'm sure. Even if you went in with the best intentions. I just think his past is too much to overcome for him to be the face of this video being released. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I try not to hate anybody, but it is really hard for me when I see that he has desecrated a suicide victim, you know, especially as being one who has attempted suicide twice in my life. You know, just putting that out there, you know, if you're, if you're thinking about it, please get help. You know, I am so thankful that. I failed in my attempt and that I'm here to talk about it today. But for him to desecrate somebody who succeeded rips my soul apart. I don't want to say anything else because I, I don't want to start getting in a name calling or anything petty like that. But that's just how I feel about it. Right. He, what did he do that for? He did that for views. Yeah. He knew where he was going. He knew what happens in this forest in Japan. And he went in there with a the film crew. And what he was looking for, he found and then ended up on YouTube. And that's terrible. You, know, you that's... wouldn't want to find a family member that way. Like his family found out with the person, I don't know if it's male or female, that person, their loved ones found out because he did it on YouTube. Yeah. And, you know, I, I had a, a guy I sat down with and ate dinner with in Iraq hang himself that same night. And it's not easy to talk about. And I had another soldier friend that uh, shot himself with a revolver. <laughs> sorry. No, I'm I'm sorry. Th thank you for sharing that. That is, it's just terrible. There needs to be more mental health resources for overseas for soldiers. Help them over there. A, a lot of pressure gets put on people, and there's not always the right resources for them. So I appreciate you sharing that, and I hope that somebody, if they're at that crossroads, they you know they're listening to your words, they reach out and get help. Thank you. I appreciate you listening to me, too. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Duke, I really appreciate your time. I know you said you had off the night shift, so I don't want to keep you up, you know, what could be coming up close to your bedtime. Can you just give me a recap of the major event without me stepping on your toes? I'm going to step back. And if you can just give a timeline for that, and this way, when people are listening, they won't have to deal with me jumping in. All right. So uh, it's approximate date is May 20th, 2020. And uh, allegedly following the uh, events that I'd researched, uh, this event occurred early morning. I do know there was a civil rights protest going on outside, so there were many people outside. First video I saw was uh, car sirens, police sirens going off, police pulling up, setting a perimeter. There's a small bluish, bluish energy orb of some kind and uh as it flew over the town there was different power outages lights flickering like i said cars and dogs going crazy and it was just too much to ignore and it was from different streets and different parts of the town people said it was a drone show but like why would they have drones giving uh electromagnetic interference it doesn't make any sense 
Now, there's some disconnected videos. Some of them are hoaxes, but the most, the two most disturbing videos I saw was uh, one of the Brazilian Army radio comms, and they were uh, talking about handling a creature. There's still videos with the transcripts of it. They they were handling a creature. The one was talking about he didn't want to touch that thing. It, it clearly was not a human corpse. Nobody would describe a human corpse like that, especially on radio, where you're supposed to be very formal, where it's all logged. I'm pretty sure that military log exists. If that happened, if it was acting, it was really, really good acting because I had a Portuguese friend I'm still in touch with, and he translated it. And when I compared it to the translation I saw on the video, it matched up. After that, the last video I saw pretty much was hitting the nail on the hammer. And that was these people crowded around outside, like vehicles pulled up outside this government military installation. There was smoke coming from the forest, and people started yelling, and there was gunshots and an explosion. And then the piece of physical evidence we have is a death certificate. There was a, a woman on Facebook, and you can look up this called the Imbel Factory Explosion, I-M-B-E-L. It's supposedly some kind of munitions factory. A UFO can cause electronic interference, so it would make sense that a UFO could detonate something in a munitions factory for sure. They've been rumored to control nukes and uh, set off submarines, all, all sorts of things. It's definitely within the scope of their ability. The final thing I want to bring to everybody's attention is the U.S. Southcom, U.S. Southern Command, had a military briefing a few days before the incident, which is still on their website. And I, I'd be glad to provide that link later on. And that's basically all I have. Thank you for making that concise. I definitely butchered that in the beginning of our, our interview, and I apologize for that. So what you laid out, a lot of this can be viewed in multiple videos online. Some of this has been scrubbed. A lot of this can still be viewed. And MUFON comes out and says it's a hoax. That's correct. This is the most detailed. What's a good thing about a hoax? And if, if other people want to come out and say that it is. A small group of people. If you have, you know, what's the old saying? Three can keep a secret if two are dead. Three people, someone's going to tell a secret. A thousand people. Someone's going to come out and say, hey, this is all BS. Provide the receipts. Show where they're supposed to show up at. Oh, at 8 o'clock, I'm supposed to dress in military garb and, and use this. And then, oh, at 4 p.m., I'm going to be over here on the street and filming. Nobody has that. These are all independent videos. These are all local Twitter users uploading their information. And MUFON comes out and goes, oh, it's just a hoax. The surprising thing about this is uh, a lot of these accounts are banned. And they have false charges planted as the reason. Like um, they were accused of all sorts of things like threats and that sort of stuff. Reddit's admins were just like, oh, this, this is hoax. They're spreading disinformation. And well, why would you ban somebody for that? I could understand deleting the thread, but just banning people. One YouTube account that I know for sure got banned for this. And it was something like chasing the ghosts or or ghosts that chase you. Something it was something like uh chasing ghosts back. Chasing ghosts back. I think that's who it was. And they had one of the most compelling mage UFO video evidences. And you know, when I was looking for the video again some time later, it was just gone. I found the exact link. And the only thing that was left is the preview image that's in the cache. And it's just it's gone forever. Nobody knows where to get it. One, I think big tech gets involved too much. I think that's another conversation. If you want to talk about medical procedures or things that people should do for their health, and it is not fully vetted and accurate, even if it's right, and they take it down, I'm like, you know what? You're not a doctor. That's fine. You know, I shouldn't be up here telling people, you know, take these supplements and, and do like, I'm not a doctor. Go talk to a nutritionist. Go talk to your doctor. Get your labs done. They'll tell you what to do. So somebody online telling people how to be healthier or to avoid whatever it might be, probably not the best. You want to get into political discussions and how one side's doing one thing and we need to rise up, probably not great. We're getting into treason territory. We're getting in, into things that can cause a lot of issues in society. Take that down, have it somewhere else, talk amongst your friends, whatever you want to do. You have an object in the sky and it's a hoax. So what does that mean? It's so stupid that somebody put a drone in the sky and filmed it. Who cares? Leave it up if it's a hoax and let people see it. That them taking it down adds more credence that it's a true event. 
It absolutely does. And uh, it just really burns me up because, you know, like this is, I uh, hate to sound lame and repetitive, but it's, it's the biggest event in human history. And it just keeps getting pushed to the side. And I've just never been able to understand it other than fear. That's the only thing I can think of. People are, they, they think they can just ignore the elephant in the room and it'll go away. And it's not going away. Like there's something here. There's something here. We don't we don't know what it is, but it's here. And people are reporting the same things all around the world. And people just keep choosing to laugh at it. And then it happens. I've seen it happen even to skeptics. And they can they can appear to who they want to appear to. They can appear to two out of ten people or three out of four people, you know, and be invisible to the rest. That makes what they're doing even easier. No, I definitely hear that. I am disappointed in US podcast. Joe Rogan had James Fox on talking about the, the Vergine incident in Brazil. Mage is not mentioned. Greg Carwood, Higher Side Chats, has tons of different guests on talking about UFOs and everything else. I'm pretty sure I've not heard him mention Mage. Sam Tripoli, great podcast and foil hat. He covers everything. And he, he goes in all these rabbit holes. He doesn't mention Mage, even if you don't fully believe it. I think this conversation is worth having for it being, I'm not going to rank greatest informational resources we have in the history of anything. But in the most recent, this was the social media event of disclosure that everyone's been waiting for. And it just got suspended, pushed under the rug, shadow banned, that I'm the only one having a podcast talking about. It's ridiculous. You know, if, and if it's true, we're shadow banned. I'll let you know. Like, hey, man, Duke, you were right on this. Like, nobody wants to talk about this. It's ridiculous. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And, you know, I'm... I'm a pacifist by nature. You know, I might not seem like it because I tweet angry, but I, I tweet angry because that's my coping mechanism. I don't mean half the stuff I say, but what I say to you right here on video is all real. And, you know, for James Fox to do the same thing MUFON did, I, I had been bugging, you know, Joe Margill a long time, and I respect him. He's a good guy, but I had been bugging him to the point where finally, he asked James Fox if Mage was real. And James Fox is like, no, it's not real. And people just took him at that. Oh, the legendary James Fox said it. So we're going with that. Like they didn't investigate it. You know, no fact checking. And where's the investigation? Where's the teamwork? It's like all hell James Fox. He said it. So that's the case. You can't be like that. His entire conversation on Rogan was him explaining to Rogan how people wanted him to look into the Vagine incident. I know I mispronounced it there. I'm sorry, people. Look in that incident and create his documentary. And he brushed them off for years. He said he had a wealthy backer. Hey, please look into this. I think this is real. And the guy was like, I'm not doing this. I'm not wasting my time. And he said he didn't believe it until he landed. And everybody there knew about it and didn't care about it. That it was so well known. They're like, what are you talking about? Of course that happened. Like everybody, everybody saw it. And for him to sit here and, hey, if you don't want to investigate, like I'm not in control of your time and your money to go do what you want. But then the answer is just like, I haven't looked into it. But to say, no, that's not real. You didn't look into it, man. You can't say that. Exactly. Exactly. Because you brushed off something else that you don't want to look into that now you're going on Rogan and selling for billions of dollars being like, oh no, this is 100% real now that I looked into it. Just say you don't have time. That's fine. People can understand. You can't be everywhere all at once. You can't look into everything all at once. But yeah, you know, that's that's where I'm coming from. Duke, I sincerely appreciate your time. Do you want to plug anything? You want to tell people where to find you or or find these videos? I'll be around. I just kind of like to hide in the shadows, you know. <laughs> Duke lays low. Leave him alone. That's what he's saying. Yep. <laughs> if he wants to talk to you, he's gonna he can talk to me and I'll I'll get his message out to you. I'm just joking, Duke. Whenever you want to talk to people, let him go. You're welcome <laughs> back on here whenever you want. I sincerely appreciate it. I appreciate you sharing all of your information on the UFO, on your experiences, and on your even more on your personal experiences. I'm glad you've overcome. It, it appears you've overcome a lot of that, and you're dealing with it in a positive fashion. I sincerely appreciate that. If you are in the armed forces, if you are somebody who is not on the right path that they want to be on, reach out to somebody, get help. Duke is here to tell you that there are better days from the one that he faced and it is worth to continue going on. So please reach out. Yes, Duke, sir. It's been an honor. Thank you so much. I sincerely appreciate it. You have a great day. You too, sir.
Thank you. All right, everyone. That was our show. Don't forget to leave a review on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you stream your podcast. Like and follow the podcast on Facebook and Instagram to stay up to date in all things wild and weird. Check out the links in the show notes for more information on our guests. The biggest support you can offer is to tell everyone about the podcast. Until next time.